Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is the first Friday of the month, which means it's time for Plant Fueled with Dr. Nikki Davis. I hope I pronounce this correctly. I've been practicing. She's going to be making vegan black bean and frijoladas. Ooh, I met. <laughs> Yay. Please welcome her back to the show. Did I say it correct, Dr. Davis? AJ, you said it perfectly. Now, I, I don't speak Spanish, but that sounded perfect to me. So you did great. Thank you so much. I've never heard of what you're making. Is it is it available at Taco Bell, for example? <laughs> you know, I don't think it is. I, I, I know that it's a very um, popular Mexican dish, and I had actually never heard of it until I went camping in Montana several years ago. And we had met a family and we were eating our, a kale salad and they were asking us, well, you're eating kale, you're camping. Well, yeah. And so then we got to talking that we only eat plants and they said, oh, well, there's this recipe that we make a lot called in frijoladas that you could easily make vegan. Um, you just have to change a few things here and there. And I thought, oh, I'll try that. That sounds really simple and delicious. And so we got home and we tried it and we loved it. And it's really, really easy. So I really like it for that, that it's something that you can make using things that you should already pretty much have in your house. Um, and then it takes no time at all. And it's really, really yummy. So um, this is one that I have made for my family several times now since we found out about it. But yeah, I had no idea. I had never heard of it until we met these people camping. So it was a, it was kismet. It was perfect. Well, that sounds great. Well, they sound like a lot of fun too. Yeah. Yeah. It was nice. Well, you know, when we go camping because we just have, we have, you know, we have an only child. We're always looking for other people to hang out with so that he's got friends to play with. And so this family had a bunch of kids and so they got to playing and we got to talking with them. So That's it's, it's good actually having an only child. It, it forces you to go out and, and talk to people and meet people so that your kid has someone to play with when you're traveling. It, that, that's so great is your shirt is really cute where did you get it so this is a farm sanctuary are you familiar with them I am I just saw Gene Bauer up here he was here for a oh. fundraiser I did not know that's a very cool shirt yeah thank you yeah I like to try to support them as much as I can so when I see something cute that I can buy I get it yeah, so yeah I was wearing this around today picking out my groceries <laughs> and it's a cute color and it looks good on you and great earrings. I love it. I love it. Is your Thank son, you. Is your son homeschooled or does he go to school? No, he goes to school. Yep. In fact, he's going to be, he's going to be going into fifth grade this fall. Um, but the school he's going to be going to is a middle school. So he's starting middle school in fifth grade. Um, so it's a fifth to eighth grade and it's a charter school, but it's called the Salt Lake Arts Academy. Uh, mm -hmm. So it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. They, they do art every single day. Oh, that sounds um, amazing. I love doing yeah. that. Does he, does he bring his lunch or do they sell lunch at school? He brings his own lunch. Everyone does. So oh, everyone does. Yeah. So that'll be nice. Nice. Because we already did that anyway with his old school. Do people ever comment on his lunch? Cause it might be a little bit different than theirs. Um, you know, what's interesting. So yes, people do. And we've had conversations with him about kind of what to say, but we actually had this come up yesterday. Um, we were hanging out with one of his friends and his friend had mentioned, oh yeah, there's that place that I like to go to get ice cream. They have the best ice cream. We should go back and get that ice cream. And he says, oh, never mind, You can't have it. And my son said to him, well, I can have it. I just choose not to. <laughs> and I was like, I'm so proud of you for saying that because it's true. He could, he just chooses not to. And I love that he said that, that it's not like, my mom makes me or anything like that. It's just that he chooses not to have that. That is so cool. I wonder how many more people we'd have that were vegan if they were raised vegan, because it seems that when you get them, when they're young, they have, they, they stay vegan. Yeah. Well, because, you know, they don't know otherwise and it's delicious. It's not like we don't like food in our family. We love eating. We love food. And it's just, you can make it delicious by eating just plants. There's, there's no reason to have the other stuff. So about that every day. Cause I love my food so much and I'm not, I used to be overweight and I'm not, and I'm like, this is so good. And I get to eat so much. Why doesn't everybody do this? I know we're getting there. We're, that's why we're doing these kinds of things, right? So we can show people it's really easy and it can be delicious. Yeah. So, um, so like you mentioned, I'm going to be making the black bean and frijoladas 
and um, very, very simple. So really all you need are corn tortillas. There's six, six inch round corn tortillas, uh, yellow or white corn and two cans of black beans. Now you are gonna be using everything out of the can. So including the juice that's in there. And so I recommend that you get one that has either really low sodium or none at all because it's gonna be in there. You can't like drain the beans and rinse them to get any of that off of there. So, because you're using everything in there. Um, so two cans of that. And then really the only other thing is just whatever you wanna put on top. And so today I have like some green leaf lettuce, some green onions, red onion, tomato and avocado. And, and you could also do some salsa too. So you can kind of just decide what would be good on top. I was actually thinking about it today that even doing some corn on top would be really delicious too. So you can get kind of um, creative with your toppings. But the first thing I'm gonna do is the beans. So like I said, we're gonna do two cans of black beans and these I'm gonna blend up in my blender. So uh, we'll put those in there and it makes just kind of like this black bean paste that we are going to then pour into a big pot. And I'll show you, you gotta make sure that you have a pot that has um, you know, tall sides because it's gonna be liquidy. And that's what we're going to end up dipping our tortillas into. So let me get these open. Do you have a preferred brand of corn tortilla? Have you ever heard of the Mi Rancho? I have, yeah. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure I've had those before. Um, I don't really have a preferred brand. Um, I The ones that I bought today, today are Rico brand, which is a local company here in Salt Lake. Um, so they're good, but yeah. You basically, most corn tortillas are oil-free. You just have to look just to make sure. Um, but you know, most of them are just corn, water, lime, and maybe some salt. So you just wanna look and make sure they haven't added too many crazy things. There you go, just pour everything in there. Well, I haven't seen you for a while, AJ. I know we- I know all the, regulars took, all the regulars took July off. I missed you, thanks for coming back. I know, well, it's great to be back. And actually, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm in a different place today. So I'm in my, my mom's condo here in Salt Lake. Um, so yeah, visiting with my mom today. So I said, well, can I, can I just film from there? She's, oh yeah, sure. Well, she's going to glean your efforts because she's. Yes, gonna exactly. Them. Yeah. And she didn't know what these were either. I haven't made these for her before. So she was like, wait, what is this? <laughs> what are you making? But yeah, this will, um, the two bean, the two um, cans of beans will be enough to make about 12, well, enough to coat 12 tortillas. And I do about three to four tortillas per person for this meal. So you can feed three or four people. Um, so, you, so it's actually pretty inexpensive too, if you think about it, it's an inexpensive meal, but then you're getting the delicious beans in there and the corn. So this is a really good starch solution meal, very starchy with the corn and the beans. All right. You know, I was looking at your Instagram page and the link for it is in the show notes. I can also put it in the chat. You made some kind of broccoli mini frittata. Oh, yes. Well, are you talking about the one that we did, um, that I did on your show? Well, I mean, you just posted it on Instagram just a few days ago. Um. I wouldn't have posted it a few days ago, but I have made a, um, I have made a broccoli uh, frittata that, um, that I made, I, I think I made that on your show back in May, maybe, well, or I, April. I didn't know that. I can't, I can't tell. The it was most. That's yeah. The, but it, they, they look like little cupcakes almost. Yes. Um, so yeah. So that was one that I made on your show. That was when I was in Las Vegas. I don't know if yes. you remember. I was in that, Las the, Vegas. The for my Las Vegas. Wow. They look yeah. really good. Oh, they were delicious. It was a forks over knives recipe. Um, they turned out amazing. Yeah. All right. Hopefully that's not too loud for you. No, Zoom will mute it. Don't worry. Yeah, good. Um, so while that's going, I'm going to start 
heating up my pan here. So this one, I'm gonna actually heat up these tortillas. So we'll get that going. And I'm gonna use medium heat for both. So medium heat to not only just heat up these tortillas, but also medium heat to heat up the black bean, the blended black beans. So I'm gonna start doing that too. And so you'll need to have, uh, the other thing that you'll need is something to be able to take the tortilla and dip into the blended black beans. And I've got a couple of options here. Sometimes I'll just use this, which is just like kind of salad tongs and that works pretty well. And I've got this too. Um, so just kind of whatever you have that'll work to do that. All right. I'm just going to throw one of these on there and let that start heating up. And then there's our blended mixture. So just beans, nothing else. I, you could probably get creative and add some things to it, but this is just such, you know me, I like simple stuff, simple recipes. And then I've got, um, I've got a, this uh, spatula that I really like that is just kind of tall and skinny that uh, works really well for just scraping out of the, blender. And you're using a blend tech, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. I love the blend tech. And I know people love the Vitamix too, but what's so cool I love about the blend tech is you can see the lines for the measuring on the side. Whereas on the yes. Vitamix, you can't see them. Oh, really? Yeah. Cause they're, they're not, they're not written like dark and black. They're just kind of like, you know, in the plastic. Oh, gotcha. Yep. You have a yeah. thing that makes sound less, right? Yeah, the thing over the top is just to help with the sound. We had another blend tech that we loved, um, but it was so loud. <clears throat> and you know, if our son is sleeping in the morning, we don't want to wake him up. And so we would just not make our smoothie until he woke up. And so now, you know, it's so much more quiet. So it makes it nice. All right. I'm just going to move that out of the way. And then uh, let's see here. I just want to make sure you can actually see this, kind of what this looks like. But it's just this, you know, delicious black bean, blended black beans. So you just want to get those to where they're getting nice and hot. Um, so I usually wait, you know, five or 10 minutes until it looks like they're, they're nice and hot. Um, and then same thing with the tortillas. You just want to, now these are already pretty much cooked tortillas, um, but you want them to get, hot as well because dipping them in there you want them to be hot and then they'll also get nice and hot from that too so I'm just gonna I said medium heat my mom was telling me that for a stove top you have to turn it up a little bit past what you'd think so that's why I'm turning mine up a little bit but otherwise we will let those kind of start to heat up and then I will start chopping up our toppings and like I said, you can kind of get creative. Um, I always like to try to add greens where I can. So I just have like this leafy green lettuce that I'm just gonna kind of chop up into little pieces that we can put over the top. But this is kid approved. My son has really enjoyed this meal. So if you want something really easy for kiddos, this is a good one. Kid tested, mother approved. Yes. <laughs> so I'm gonna do the leafy green uh, lettuce, some tomatoes and some onions. So I've got both green onions and red onions. And I like both, so I'll probably put both on there. And then if you, if you like avocado or, you know, I know some people try to stay away from a lot of avocado, which is fine, you know, it's pretty high in fat, but a little bit here and there. I know my son certainly enjoys it over the top of his. All right. And I'm hoping that this avocado works. You know, sometimes they've got bins and bins of avocados and not one soft one in sight. This was the softest one I can find. So hopefully it'll, hopefully it'll be good. Oh, but you were mentioning my earrings. I got them at our uh, farmer's market a few weeks ago. 
but yeah, they're like these wooden yeah, earrings that someone had made. Yeah, I thought they were so cute. I'm a I'm a sucker for earrings. Probably the same way you're a sucker for hats. I know you have all your really fun, interesting hats. I, I do that because we, I, I guess I can full disclosure. I go for <laughs> physical therapy, and the, the only time they can ever see me is nine thirty, and it's a one hour thing, and then it's twenty five minutes home. So it's like I don't have time to, you know, blow dry my hair. So that's why you see me in hats so much. Well, but I, I, but you always have the cutest hats though. It's not like you Thank just you. wear some I do, same I do. boring hat all the time. No, no, I have, I have way too many hats and a lot of them are <laughs> gifts from viewers. So like, I like Amy. So thank you. And, uh, oh. and Karen. So yeah, they see one and yeah, there's a whole thing of bling hats like you can buy. So I, I do. Yeah. Like thank you. All right. I think we did okay with this avocado. It's actually pretty nice. And I don't know if you saw the way that I like to do cut my avocados is I'll cut it around, you know, I'll just cut it all the way around and then twist it. And you've got the pit on one side. And then I never, this is just, you know, having seen injuries in the ER, um, I never would recommend holding it like this and cutting into it because if it slips through, it's going to cut your hand. I've seen that more times than I can count. Um, but basically I just keep it down flat and then just make sure I'm holding the side of it. And I cut about halfway through and then I spin it around so that if my knife slips, there's no chance that I'm going to cut into my hand. Cause it's so easy to cut through the skin. So I'll probably leave it like that. And then we'll scoop that out. I'm going to grab a spoon here. Okay, so our beans are starting to bubble up. So that's what I want to see. They're getting nice and hot. Okay, we've got our tortillas are getting started here. Do you ever teach your patients how to cook? I don't, I have not done that. Um, I'm just kind of like a, I've never taken lessons for cooking, you know, and I don't know. I, I've never even considered really doing that, but that would be fun. I, I do really, you know, my, my motto is to really just keep things super simple because I feel like it's easier to um, make this way of eating sustainable. It's making it really, really simple. Um, and so that's kind of, that would be kind of the things that if I were going to teach my patients how to cook, it would just be about really simplistic methods. You know, baking potatoes and cooking rice, steaming vegetables, nothing too crazy. AJ, when was it that you became a chef? I don't know if I'm even a chef. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> only Miss Ramses Brav always says, you, you know, you're not a real chef because you know I I buy onions already chopped, I buy garlic already <laughs> peeled, I buy rice that's already frozen. So I'm, I graduated culinary school 20 years ago, but I started cooking when I was seven, and I've always I've always really? food because to me it's like fun, it's like arts and crafts, which I still always enjoy because I like making stuff. And the great thing about food is you make it and you get to eat it. You don't have to like look for a space on the wall to hang that's it up. That's true. That's true. And if there's a mistake, you get to eat it. So it's, um, I've always thought it was really fun, but like you, I, I can't do, I mean, maybe once a year, like if it's my husband's birthday or Thanksgiving, I'll do like a fancy complicated recipe, but I don't, I don't think that's sustainable and I don't have time for that. And it's just, it's just easier to batch cook and, you know, oh, my new thing. Have you seen the wraps I've been making? That's my new thing. I did see. And those look really good. I and might have to try something so like good. that. So, so now all I do is eat what I was going to eat. But instead of using a fork and a plate, and then I don't have to wash it. It's so cool. I just take whatever the dinner or lunch was, wrap it, 
and eat it. And I'm so happy. And this is wow. added some good variety to my eating because the wraps come in, I mean, in Lissa's book, there are almost 40 different ones. So I, you know, I vary the wrap and it's, and, and it's just a way to get into more vegetables and wow. I just, it's just fun. I, and it's just fun. I mean, Hey, can you imagine sending one of these giant wraps to school with your kid? People will want to <gasps> eat these eating. Oh, you know? I love that idea. And it's just like ready to go. You don't have to do anything to it. You don't have to heat it up or anything. Like it's just, nope. yeah. It's so good. And you know, the thing is, is one of the reasons I've been promoting this, I don't, I don't get anything for Lissa selling books. She's my friend. Yeah. Is that is that I think people were thinking, well, this is a raw food thing and I'm not raw. Well, it just happens that the wraps are raw, but they hit every note. They're gluten-free, they're flour-free, they're low calorie dense. There's no oil or, or, or salt. And I'm showing people, Hey, you can take something that is like technically raw and put cooked food in it. That's what I do. I don't, yeah. I don't eat it as a raw wrap. I'm putting sweet potatoes in and my husband's putting beans in and I'm putting rice in. It's just, it's just so much easier. Just. Oh, that sounds so good. I yeah, will yeah. definitely have to try that because adding the starch, I think to me would be key. Yeah. You got to have some starch in there. That's amazing. Oh, that's all they are starch. But the thing is, is the wraps that are currently available, I can't eat gluten. And so think about it. What's available is like a, a big piece it's of true. bread a flour yep. tortilla because corn tortillas are great, but they're not big enough. They don't make them big right. enough for me to make a wrap. So this was, I, this was just a wonderful thing. And I, I avoided them at first. I got the book in April and I'm like, Oh, this is too hard because you got to like, yeah. and then when I saw Tammy Kramer making them, I'm like, I'm like, Tammy, is it hard? He goes, no, it's easy. It really is easy. Cause I blend the stuff. You just put everything in a blender. And uh, before I go to bed, I put it in the dehydrator trays and I wake up and it's done. It's like, I haven't done anything. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, I'm convinced I'm going to have to try that now. They really are delicious. And then after I got confident, then I started like just adding, you know, Lisa has great recipes, perfectly sliced. But then like one day I was out of tomato powder. I'm like, uh oh, and I put in barbecue seasoning and I'm like, oh, this is good. Oh, yeah. All right. Fun. I'm a wrap making fool. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So I'm going to um, show you how I do my first one. So this, uh, these black bean, sorry, the Black, the blended black beans are nice and bubbling and hot right now. So I'm going to take this tortilla that I heated up already, and I'm just going to put it right in there. And you just kind of push it in and flip it over till it gets coated. And we're going to put it up on the plate. And basically what you're going to do is just, let's see, make sure you can see that. You just fold it over. So you just kind of fold it in half, and it becomes like a little folded bean and free holada. And then we just take the next one and we do the same thing. We throw that in. And like I said, you're going to have enough of this black bean, this, these blended black beans to make, um, you know, about 12 of these. And then you just kind of stack them like that. So you've got the first one that's folded over, the second one that's folded over. And then once we get our next one, then we'll do the same thing. We'll fold that one over. And then you've got this plate of these folded over uh, corn tortillas, and then you just put your toppings over the top. So you know, it simple like, as that. It almost looks like chocolate pudding. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> Definitely doesn't taste like that. Yeah, it, and it smells so good too because it's just black beans. All right, so I'm gonna throw in this next one. It gets a little bit tricky to pull it out um, depending on what you're using. So, cause they can get slippery because of the beans, but. All right. Okay, so that's kind of what it ends up looking like right there. And then we're just gonna add over the top, whatever we want. So some leafy greens. Mexican and I know, right? Mexican and Asian are my two favorite. Uh, and I say Asian because it doesn't matter if it's Thai, Japanese, or Chinese. They're, yes. they're starch based cuisines when you think about it. I know, like sushi is so easy to get with just rice and, and veggies and seaweed. Oh, and I forgot to chop up our green onions, but that's okay. Well, uh, let's get some avocado on there. What? Okay. The, she said Cecil, the brand of. Tortillas was just a local brand she used. Yeah, it's just a local brand. But there are, you know, like I said, most of them out there are pretty minimal ingredients and you just have to make sure they don't have oil. Most of them don't. 
most most of the time it's just corn, water, lime, salt. Janet says, do, right. you, do you have any seasoning recommendations for this recipe? So you don't really need seasoning, honestly, because the stuff on top is what's going to give you like a lot of flavor, you know, the tomatoes and the onions and everything. And then you're getting the black beans. If you really wanted to, you could add maybe some salsa to the black beans. Uh, the one that I really have been liking in our family is just this green salsa from Trader Joe's, Salsa Verde. So you easily could add that in there. Um, or you can even just put a little of this, you know, if you just like have a salsa that you like, you just put that over the top. So that's the nice thing is you can really, this could be kind of a, like a, and free whole lot of night, you know, you can make a bar for different people. So then everybody can kind of make it the way that they like. So you just give them the base and then they can add whatever they like on top. So if they like some spicy salsa on there, um, whatever toppings they want. So it makes it really, really simple. Um, but that's going to be what I'm going to be eating today because it's so, so yummy. That looks really pretty, like restaurant pretty. Well, I think I could have done a little bit better, but not too bad. You know, when you're on camera and you're trying to make sure that it, <laughs> it's all working. That's even prettier than the picture you sent me. Really? I think so. Yeah, we got to get some of these green onions. I love green onions. I love scallions. I put scallions on everything. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to leave this over here. And so when you do your scallions, I was actually asking my mom this today. I always just cut off the little, you know, the little fuzzy end or not fuzzy, but you know, the, with the roots on it. And I usually use most of it. Is that how you do your scallions? Do you use most of it? I use the whole thing. I yeah, use, that's great. I, I, I like the crunchy part. I like the less crunchy part. And one of the things I learned is for people that have to avoid onions, if they, this, the green part is actually low FODMAP. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I like all of it, but I thought, am I, am I doing it wrong? You know, what do most people use? Do they only use the green part? Do they only use the white part? Do they use both? I like all of it, so I just yeah, use all of it. it. That's good to hear. They're good on everything. Scallions are great on rice, on salad, on soup. I always have it as a condiment for people to add. Yeah, it's just because it gives you so much flavor. Flavor and, and if you can, yeah, if you can find good flavor in just a natural food that's just already in its whole form, then why not? Yum. Yeah, that's going to make it right there. All right, so there you go. Not with yummy. That's what I'm eating for my lunch today. I know. Isn't it great that we do the show right before lunch? I guess people for the East Coast, it's not right before lunch, but. Yeah, unless they have a late lunch. I mean, but yeah, it is perfect, actually. Such an easy um, every... recipe. Yeah, it is. It's really, really, really simple. Um, oh, wow. I didn't right. even do this. Susanna says, I regrow my green onions in water, leave about an inch in the roots, put them in the window, and they regrow in a week. I change the water every other day, leave the top sticking out. I had no idea you could do that. Wow, that's cool. That's really cool. Uh, Maxine says, you can plant the root ends and they grow for months. I did not know oh, wow. you could grow your own. These are tish. She's using corn tortillas. Yeah. Mine are the, I'm doing, uh, they're white corn, yeah. but you could do whatever and you like. Lisa, no, she did not put any spices in the beans. She said it's flavorful enough just by what she's putting on top. And did you, mm -hmm. Linda says, did you put any fresh cilantro on top? <gasps> no, but that's a great idea. I love cilantro. Not everybody does, but I do. Yeah, a lot of people. So yeah, that's a great idea. Yep. So yeah, and then you basically just make as much as you can to use up the beans that are in here. And if you know you have more people that you're serving, just add more cans of beans. I mean, it's really that simple. So Elizabeth says, so how does one eat it when the tortillas are wet from dipping in them first? Eat it with a fork. So. Um, I can show you because <laughs> it smells so good. I'm anxious to have a bite. 
And then if you have time, there's a few doctory type questions that were sent in. Sure, of course. Okay. So yeah, you literally just cut into it and you get a bite like that. Ooh. Mm. Nice. So good. Nice. Almost kind of like a lazy quesadilla. Yeah. But uh, yeah, instead of all the cheese, you just use beans. And I love the flavor of black beans. So you really don't need anything. And you know, this is another way that you could pull these out instead of having to like use some kind of a tong. So I'm just mm -hmm. putting my spatula underneath. So you can pull it out that way too. And then you just have to make sure that you fold it over when you put it on the plate. I know you can't see that, but that's probably the hardest part of this is just getting it out and folding it. And if I can do it, you can do it. And you can always, you know, if you didn't get enough, uh, enough beans on your tortilla, you can always just scoop it out and add more. But so that's where you're just folding them in half over each other like that. Never heard of this dish before. <laughs> I know. And I, it's, it's, it's just fun. Kind of the things that as you get talking to people that's that you learn about. In half. <laughs> that's neat. All right, I'm gonna make one more of these. And then, yeah, go ahead. If you have any doctory questions, I'm happy to yep, do my are... best at answering them. Yep, okay, here we go. Um, Dr. Davis used a corn tortilla, guys, from her local market. Okay, yes. so the first question is from Keisha. Dr. Davis, if a person tests good on B12 and vitamin D, do you still test again the following year? Is this something you should test for annually? Uh, so it depends. Um, not everyone. I would say if your levels look really good and you're not changing kind of your sun exposure or if you're supplementing vitamin D, you definitely should be supplementing B12 no matter what if you're plant-based. Um, but yeah, sometimes, you know, if people are low on vitamin D, then I might check again the next year just to make sure that you know, whatever change we've made uh, is working. And same thing with B12. If somebody comes to me and they're, and we check their B12 and it's low, um, then yeah, we'll maybe increase their supplement or start them on a supplement and then check it again after a year. So it really kind of depends on the person. Not everybody needs to check it every single year, um, but they're easy tests to do with just your, you know, your yearly tests. Um, so it's not, not a bad idea to just check them and just to make sure that they're looking good. Um, but I'd say that just really kind of depends on each person. A lot of people take it every day and you don't need to, right? It, it, you don't need that much. Are you talking about B12? Yeah. It, well, it kind of depends on the dose, you know, so I usually recommend, recommend about 500 micrograms a day for most people. Some people might need more. Um, but if you don't want to take it every day, you can just take one dose a week. You know, you could take like 2,500 micrograms a week um, and, and get about the same amount. So whether or not you want to do that, or if you want to take a thousand every other day, you know, depending on whatever your doses that your, uh, that your doctor has told you that they want you to take, you can just kind of take it however you want. So you don't have to take it every single day. You can, you can just make it how you want to, to get that same amount. Here's another question. It is from Helen. Have you or any of the other plant-based experts have had any success healing lung, bone, or limp sarcoidosis? Uh, I personally have not, but I don't think that I've tried to. Um, yeah, no, that isn't something that I've ever had come across with my patients. Do you know anybody that might have? No, um, but the good thing with, so we didn't necessarily talk about it too much, but I, um, so when you see me as a patient, you're seeing me through a platform called Love Life Telehealth. And we have, I can't remember how many doctors we have, 10 or 11, but 
when you see one of those doctors, if you have a complicated history or complicated diseases, um, we're always talking to each other. So it's almost as if you get all of us. And actually we have access to Dr. Clapper as well, who is no longer seeing patients, but still part of our team still comes to our meetings. So the nice thing is that if something comes to me and I say, you know, I haven't seen this, or um, I don't really know if, if anyone has had success treating this difficult thing, um, then I can go back and talk to all of the doctors that I work with and see if any of them have come across this. And a lot of times, you know, because of all of our experience, some being doctors longer than others, some working, you know, we have people who've worked in emergency medicine, in family medicine, in, you know, OB-GYN, um, all different backgrounds that you're bound to get something. And then the other thing is I have really good relationships with um, you know, some of the well-known plant-based doctors out there. Cause I had a chance to work with Dr. McDougall. You know, I got to work with Dr. Alan Goldhammer, um, you know, Dr. Anthony Lynn. And so I also have reached out to some of those doctors as well, asking about things. So, um, I would say that just make sure that whatever plant-based doctor you have, that it's someone who is willing to go out there and kind of help research for you and look, um, to see if there's anything that has been done. Um, and somebody who can look at the data and and then reach out to the other plant-based doctors as well so that's kind of what i do in my practice is if there's something that i don't know i i try to find it how easy or difficult is it to get an appointment with you or one of the other doctors at love life telehealth so uh so pretty easy uh most of us have uh spots available within a couple of weeks uh, and you basically just go onto the website, love.life slash telehealth. And you can look through to see all of the doctors. Basically it'll ask, where do you live? Or, you know, what location are you in? Because that, that will make it to where you can figure out what doctors are licensed in your state, uh, whether or not you have Medicare, that also matters. And so then once you've put in those two things, then it'll tell you, these are the doctors you can see. And then you can go through and look at the profiles and a lot of us have videos on there. So you can listen to us talk about kind of, you know, how we practice medicine. And, uh, and then from there, you can choose your doctor and then set up an appointment online without even talking to somebody. So you can just set that up yourself. So it's really quite simple. Uh, and it's fantastic. I mean, it's, it's really a fun job. I love what I do, but it's also really rewarding because you get to see people getting well and, um, and yeah, so it's, and it's nice because no matter where you live, we have doctors in all 50 states in DC, we can see people if they're international. Uh, so really, no matter where you are, you'll, you'll be able to find a doctor at, at Love Life. Great. Uh, Barbara saying, do you recommend people have their blood work done before getting an appointment with you? Um, so sometimes it is beneficial if you've had lab work done. I, I always recommend that people upload it into our portal so that I can review it before I see you. And that way I can kind of get an idea as where are you currently? Uh, now, sometimes after I've met you, I might recommend, hey, you know, seeing these labs that you've already had, you didn't have this and this. So why don't we go ahead and order those today? So there might be some additional labs that I would recommend after actually talking with you. But I think it's good to have a basic lab panel or at least something that you've had done with maybe your primary doctor that you could upload so that I can take a look at that. Thank I'm just showing you this again. So we got our next set of, so delicious, yummy. So now I'll be able to feed myself and then my mom too. It's <laughs> just so pretty. A couple more questions if you have time. This is from Leslie. Is there more sulfur? Sulfuraphrain found in broccoli stalks or buds, and what is the best way to chop it for full benefits? I don't know the answer to that. Um, I do know that I try to at least eat most of the broccoli. So I, I will eat the stalk. It, as long as you cook it long enough, it can get really nice and soft. And there are still benefits to that too. You know, you still have good minerals and vitamins in there too. So I would say eat as much of it as you can. Uh, you just might have to cook the stock part a little bit more, but I don't know as far as the sulfon, I don't even know how to say that. Sulfon or yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, here's a question about blood pressure from Annie. 
is 135 over 85 considered a normal blood pressure? We were told by our local doctor, but to me that seems high. And if it is, what can we do to lower it if we're already eating a good whole food plant-based diet? So a normal blood pressure is under 120 over 80 pre-hypertension. So hypertension means you know, high, you're diagnosed with high blood pressure. That's over 140 over 90. So if you're between that 120 over 80 and 140 over 90, that's pre-hypertension. So it's kind of like pre-diabetes, you know, it's, we're worried that you could develop hypertension. Uh, and so 135 over 85 is high and it isn't normal. Uh, and so it is important that you talk with someone. And so some, it, there are lots of things that can affect blood pressure, uh, diet wise, activity wise, sleep wise, um, stress wise. Uh, mental health wise, there are just lots and lots of things that can affect it. So I think it's important to meet with someone who has experience on lifestyle and how that can affect blood pressure. If you're already eating whole food plant-based, um, I will say that if you're eating oil, uh, that that a lot of times can lead to some higher blood pressures. Uh, so making sure that you're staying away from the really, really high fat foods and oil is the highest of that because it's pure fat. Um, but yeah, so you just want to talk to someone about all the things that could be affecting that. Uh, I've, I've seen plenty of people who are eating whole food plant-based who have slightly elevated blood pressures, and we've been able to figure out what is causing that just by looking through their history. Uh, so I'd recommend just seeing somebody. Great. Oh, just and the other thing I, sorry, the other thing I wanted to mention is even though a normal blood pressure is less than 120 over 80, what I've noticed in my practice is that people who are eating plant exclusive they're staying away from the oils. They're staying away from the processed foods. Their BMI is in the normal range. Their blood pressure is usually lower than that. It's usually nineties to hundreds, maybe hundred and tens over sixties or seventies. So to me, that's, you know, somewhere in the nineties over sixties and seventies seems to be a more normal human blood pressure. Great. Thank you. Yeah, I know mine's really low and they're like always like telling me, get eat salt, you know, but that's because <laughs> they've never seen a normal blood pressure. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Jill Nussanow, hi Jill, nice to see you here, is watching live. She says, eat all of the broccoli or grow broccoli sprouts. So I guess if they're trying to concentrate, whatever that is, the sprouts mm. more. Okay, this is a question from Darlene. Is TVP, textured vegetable protein, harmful to us? I have a veggie burger cookbook and many of the recipes call for this. I've never used it. And I'm curious before I would purchase this product. So as far as I know, this is a processed product because it is just the protein that's been extracted from a plant product. Uh, so Whenever I see textured vegetable protein in something, I usually won't purchase it. Um, I prefer to just use whole foods as much as possible. So if you're wanting something that is um, kind of a meat, because it's usually used in something that's trying to be more meat-like. Uh, so what I will use, you know, I mean, we use soy and tempeh in our house. Um, the other thing that I really like that I think is probably one of the best meat substitutes out there that is so uh, minimally processed is soy curls. And those are literally just edamame. Um, and so they take the edamame beans and they squish them up and they dehydrate them and they become these kind of strips that you then rehydrate and you can marinate them. And I mean, they're, they're pretty amazing. Uh, and it's, it's nice because it really is just the edamame bean. Um, but using something that is just a protein that is going to be a processed product that isn't in its whole form. And so that's not something that I usually would recommend. Cool. Thank you. Uh, this is a question from Marianne. She said she's been whole food plant-based for over a year, taking vitamin B12 and D and her blood work in June was all in the standard range, except her D and B12. I think maybe she's implying they were high. Her vitamin D was 105.3. NG over ML and her B12 was greater than 2000 PG over ML. So she stopped taking them. Should she be concerned about these numbers? They were fasting and her doctor said to cut back. Are those too high? Can you have too high numbers? You can, uh, you can definitely, especially with vitamin D, you can definitely overdo it. And um, if you've heard Dr. McDougall talk, um, you know, we know that people who 
uh, have too much vitamin D from supplementation can have more falls as they get older. Uh, so my preference is that if you're trying to make sure that you have enough vitamin D, get it the way that it, it should be naturally gotten. And that is through the sun, you know, sun exposure to the skin, and then your body makes the vitamin D using that. Um, some people can't do that, um, depending on your skin color, depending on where you live, it may be more difficult. And so then sometimes you have to supplement, but you never want to supplement to a level that is so high. You just need just enough and insufficiency or deficiency is under 20 and then insufficiency is under 30. So if you're above 30, that's really, you know, that's normal. So if you're at a hundred, that's way above normal. Chances are you're not needing that supplement or you need much, much less. So just making sure that you are following along with your doctor on that. Now, B12 is different in that um, your body does get rid of excess. But again, if you're getting over the upper limit of normal, you're taking too much of it. Um, and so that's where you can kind of tweak what you're taking and then recheck in six months or a year and then go from there. So just making sure that you're talking with your doctor about those levels and getting them into the normal range. Thank um, you. One quick thing with B12 is um, usually the normal range, it's between about 200 and I think 1100. Um, but people can still have symptoms of low B12, like fatigue, um, even if their B12 is say, 250, which would be technically in the normal range. So I usually try to get people at least above 400, 400 or 500 for their B12. Mm, nice. Thank you. Let's see. Uh, I think those are ones that are previously submitted. So guys, make sure you subscribe at chefaj.com because you get priority on your questions. We always ask them first. Uh, Maxine says, I'm looking for a plant-based doctor that takes health insurance. My insurance covers 100% of everything. I'm in the Austin, Texas area. You guys do not take insurance yet, but maybe one day you will. We don't take insurance, um, but after you've met with one of us, we can give you a super bill and a super bill can be submitted to your insurance. Now, there's no guarantee that your insurance company will give you any sort of reimbursement for that, but we have seen people get some partial reimbursement or full reimbursement, although it's rare. So there is the chance that you could get something covered. Um, I do know that there's a guy out of, um, it's called, I think, Vegan Primary Care. I'm oh, sure you you've had Dr. him on your Scott show. Harrington? Yeah, he's got yeah. a lot on Thursdays, Dr. Scott Harrington. Oh. Yes, and uh, he'll be on, it's either next week or the week after Thursday. Yeah. Please take insurance. Yes, so that's another good option. You know, I, I feel like everyone should have access to someone out there, no matter if it's me or someone else. And also just the whole vegan community, the plant-based community, we should all be working together to help just move this forward and help make it easier for people to eat more plants and be healthy and enjoy their lives. I agree. Thank you. Uh, Christine says, what do you suggest for blood clots in the lungs? I have a friend that has that now, actually. Well, um, so that's tricky because that can happen for a variety of different reasons. Um, so that's not something that I would say that there's any, you know, cold, hard recommendation for, um, because I don't know why that happened to, to someone. Um, but just making sure that you're following up with your doctor on that. Uh, and if you think that it has something to do with a chronic disease, so a lot of chronic diseases can put you at higher risk of having blood clots in your lungs, um, you know, diabetes, um, obesity. So just making sure that you're following up cancer Right. So, uh, with so your doctor, how can obese? I didn't know. I mean, the, the, I'm thinking of the two people I know that have them. So, obesity mm -hmm. can contribute to a person developing blood clots in the lung. Yeah, it puts you at a higher risk. So, it doesn't mean that if you're obese that you will have that happen. It just means that you are more likely to have that happen. That's interesting because yeah. it, oh, okay, wow, all right. Um. Paula says, my LDL is low, but so is my HDL. I don't eat much fat. Is that why? And is it okay? We just brought this up with one of the doctors that if you're, if, if you're, if your total cholesterol is low, everything's going to be low. And they think of that exactly. as normal. I mean, mine's like 34 and they like, well, you have to exercise like I already do, but my total cholesterol is 99. So how's right. I'm not going to be able to read. If you don't have garbage, you don't need garbage trucks. Exactly. Yep. That's exactly. So if your total cholesterol is coming down, all of your cholesterol is coming down. That includes HDL and HDL is really beneficial for kind of helping you with LDL, 
of helping lower the LDL or get it out of your system. And so if you don't have as much LDL that you're dealing with, then the HDL isn't really as important. So that'll come down too. Um, but that's a very common question that I get from people as they go plant-based. They love seeing their numbers coming down and their total cholesterol is coming down, their LDL is coming down, but why is my HDL coming down? And that's just, that's just part of it. Nice. Well, cool. Have you gotten any patients from being on the show? Because yesterday, Dr. Kran said she just got two more. Oh, I, I know that I do because yeah, when we have, we have people fill out an entire really long questionnaire about all of their background and everything. And the first question they get is, how did you hear about us? And so many, many times I've seen, oh, I saw Dr. Nikki Davis on the Chef AJ show. So yeah, absolutely. Love it. Well, you know, that's fantastic. We have another one of your fine doctors, Dr. Colin Zhu with a regular slot. So that's amazing. You guys got yep. it because you're the guys that applied for it. So, hey, that'd be fun. How many doctors are there now, do you think? Uh, in At Love Life? Yeah, Love Life. Yeah, I think we have 10 or 11. 10 or 11. Once, I think yeah. we did a week once dedicated to all of them at the time. Yeah. That's right. We did. Yeah, that would be fun to do again sometime. Are you coming to the Plantrician Conference next month? Please come. I mean, I, feel I like am I'm and I'm going to your your event. Oh my God, because yes, have we ever met? I mean, I feel like I know you. I mean, but I don't think <laughs> we we've met ever once. We met once. Um, so we met at Veg Fest in Spokane, Washington. That's right. I did meet you. You had the adorable son and husband. Yes. I, I totally I did meet you, but I just feel like I know you because, you know, we spend so much time together doing this. I know. I, I'm so excited that you're coming. Maybe we can hang out a little bit. Yes, I would love that. So yeah, I'm coming early so that I can come to your well, demo. I'm so, I'm so And I'm bringing some of the other doctors with me to watch you as well. So you'll get to Thank meet a few you, of us. I was worried that doctors weren't going to come to mind because I think they do have CEUs available now. But you know, they have me on so early and it's optional that I'm like, is anybody going to come? I'm really excited. I'm man. coming. Yes, I was so yep. excited to see you on there. I'm like, yes, I'm paying extra to come see Chef oh, AJ. Oh my God, thank you. I'm a little nervous, but yeah, I'm, I'm so excited. You'll do great. You'll do great. Yeah. So I'll be there um, next month. And then I'm also going to the ACLM conference in October too. Yeah. That's going to be interesting because I think, I don't know if you know that Dr. Hans deal was supposed to win the lifetime. not supposed to, he was going to win. Yes. The achievement award I do know. Personally. I he know. Passed, he just passed away. So I don't know if they'll give it to him posthumously or the, I, I mean, it's so tuned, but that was right. I know that's unfortunate. I, I was lucky enough to get to see him speak at the plantrician conference last year because he was there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's so cool. But anyway, that's, that's wonderful. Well, I yeah. look forward to meeting, not, I mean, not meeting you, but hanging out with you and yes, we'll have a lot of fun. Oh boy. That so will be a lot of fun. I used to live there. Are you going by yourself or is anyone going with you? Nope. I'll be by myself, but you know, a lot of the love life doctors will be there. So we'll be hanging out together. Ooh, you might even have your own table. <laughs> yeah, probably. I think there'll be enough of us. All right. Well, I hope you'll let me squeeze in. Thank you so much. Yes, Dr. please. Davis, you're just a delight. I can't wait to have you back again next month for October. Who knows? Maybe I'll make something Halloween-ish. Oh, you mean September? Oh, September. I've totally forgot about September. <laughs> oh my God. And, and actually it might be because I'm the first Friday of the month, it might be when we're there. Wait a second, you're bringing up a great point. We are not going to be in town. So we'll talk afterwards to see if you want to pre-record or I'll get, to, oh my God, that's right. I did not know. Or we could do something live together if there's nothing going on that day. <laughs> the only problem is, is I, I'm up at the same time as my show. So so we'll, we'll, we'll talk, I'll call you yeah. right afterwards and we'll figure out what we'll we're figure it out. Do. But either way, you're still going to come back in October, which is the month of Halloween. So if, I don't know if you do anything special for Halloween, like a trick or a treat. Would be yeah, fun. I'll have to think of something. That'd, that'd be fun. That's great. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Nikki Davis. Absolutely. Very nice to see you as always. Same here. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow at 11 a.m. for another fabulous plant-based doctor, Dr. Terry Shintani. He is a kind, gentle soul who actually bought Dr. McDougall's practice from him when Dr. McDougall moved from Hawaii for the cost of $1. And he is going to tell you how you can reverse your lifestyle disease in 10